Hey guys, Dr. J here. We are live again. We're going to do the top five strategies to enhance your mitochondrial function. Let me know in the chat if the audio is sounding great. Hopefully we fixed it this time around. So in general, I chatted a little bit earlier about your mitochondria and how to enhance that. Essentially, your mitochondria is the powerhouse of your cell. It's where you generate ATP. It's where you generate all of your ability to um, have a good, healthy metabolism. Let's, let's dive into this here. And before we do, please smash your like button here down below. Make sure you comment. That way more people get access to the intel. Put your comments below. Let me know about your thoughts on the topic and share with family and friends too. All right, let's give us a try here again. Let me know if the audio is sounding great. So here's your parts of the cell. I want to dive in here. You have your nucleus in the middle here. There's a larger part. This is where you're going to have a lot of your DNA right here. This is your nucleolus. This is where the RNA is going to be. You have your endoplasmic reticulum. This is where you're going to be synthesizing lipids and proteins. Your Golgi apparatus is kind of the post office. This is packaging everything up so it can all go out and get delivered. And then you have the mitochondria. This is what we're talking about today. This is where we're generating energy at a cellular level. This is where the ATP comes from. And the cell membrane, this is the outer part of the cell. This is such an important part because this is the outer part is a lipid bilayer. So if you're eating lots of processed fats, processed trans fats, hydrogenated vegetable oils, et cetera, soy, et cetera, you're not going to make healthy cells and your cells communicate via a healthy cell membrane. So it's very important, the fat component. And we're going to talk about ways we can enhance this little guy, the mitochondria to generate more ATP and um, have better energy overall. So good feedback. And this is a eukaryotic cell, FYI, eukaryotic, U-E-U for you being you versus a prokaryotic is going to be um, a single cell bacteria kind of situation there. So hope that makes sense, guys. So your mitochondria is generating ATP. So a couple things we can do is get the carbohydrates dialed in. Too much carbs, too much processed sugar is going to cause your body. It's going to burn. It's a dirty fuel. It's going to burn dirty, just like diesel kind of gives an odor when it's burnt off, right? It doesn't burn as clean versus like a high octane type of race fuel is going to burn a lot cleaner. So we want to make sure we get really good fuel in the system so we're not creating lots of dirtiness and lots of oxidation. So when we have lots of extra carbohydrate, especially if we're not burning that carbohydrate right away because we're insulin resistant, that's possible. If we're insulin resistant, your insulin levels are high, your blood sugar is typically spiking after a meal, it's typically a sign that you are not going to be burning fat optimally. And especially if you're overweight, you're probably eating a bunch of stuff. You're not going to be active right afterwards. So you have this blood sugar spike up and down and that creates surges of insulin and it causes crashing at some point. And then you have surges of adrenaline and cortisol where you get moody and where you get irritable. So it's really important to look at everything holistically and say, Hey, you got to stabilize your glucose. So you're not surging insulin and you're not, um, surging adrenaline and surging cortisol. Very important. Plus, if you are surging insulin, it can throw off your hormones for guys. It's going to increase estrogen for women. It can increase testosterone. That's going to be a problem. So really important there. Also, the oxidative stress that comes as a result of excess glucose is important. Uh, next, good proteins and fats. That's important because, number one, it prevents you from overeating. Good proteins and fats are going to provide satiation signals to the brain, prevent you from overeating. Too much calories is going to cause um, more mitochondrial issues. Now I say don't count the calories, just eat food that is going to be satiating for you in the right amount so you feel satiated, so you feel full. Everyone can think back to college days or have an experience with a binge of chips or cookies or processed foods. Guess what? They don't really make you that full. So then you come back feeling a lot more um, cravings and you eat a lot more, right? Everyone has that experience of eating a whole pizza to their face or, you know, the whole com Pringles commercials of the nineties of once you pop, right? You can't stop, right? That's like a 30 year old commercial in my head and I still remember it. And so really important that we have to have those kind of things dialed in. Uh, third thing is a uh, nutrients. What nutrients can we dial in? I would say B vitamins are going to be key, right? Especially the riboflavin, B2 and B3, niacin, these are going to be the NADH and the FADH kind of derivatives, right? Nicotinamide, adenosine, dinucleotide, that's NAD, and then you know, the, the flavonoid, adenotide, dinucleotide. These are going to be your reducing agents. They gather up uh, electrons, hydrogens in particular, as they run around the Krebs cycle. About two uh, NADHs gets pumped out per one FADH2, and that runs two times, so I'm pretty sure it's four NADHs and two FADH2s. 
And that's going to then shuttle those hydrogens, electrons into the electron transport chain and generate 30 plus more ATP. So very important because the mitochondria, it generates ATP. It's really important. It's also what's called the carnitine shuttle. Carnitine is an important nutrient too because it takes that, those fatty acids, dumps it into the mitochondria where the body can then generate ATP from that as well. That, that's, that's beta acid beta fatty acid oxidation. So that's really important that we have good carnitine. And carnitine comes from uh, methionine and lysine. It's it's in my um, Lippincott biochemistry textbook. It literally says in there that mitocot that uh, carnitine is a rate limiting nutrient that many vegetarians cannot make because the amino acids that are needed typically are not there in vegetarian foods. So this is really important. If you're vegetarian vegan, it's going to be harder for you to have the carnitine, which then is really important for utilizing that fatty acids for fuel in your mitochondria. Very important. Um, so that's number three. I would say uh, number four, we can do red light. Red light's excellent. That's That mid-600 nanometer frequency is awesome because that is going to supercharge your mitochondria. So if you're – let's say you don't want to do anything here. Just get a really good quality red light or even get out in the sun. Again, the sun's going to have rays that can also burn you, so just be careful. Don't get burned. But a good red light device, I'll put the one that I use down below in a link. That's going to be very powerful. It's going to charge up that mitochondria. Definitely, um, it's going to help you generate more ATP as well. Very good. Very helpful. And then, of course, um, number five is going to be toxicity. So toxins, whether it's uh, mycotoxins from mold, heavy metals, those things are going to junk up the, the Krebs cycle, make it harder for you to generate energy. At, an, at a cellular level. Also, things like pesticides can impact thyroid hormone too. Lower thyroid hormone, lower overall metabolism, lower thyroid hormone is going to impact mitochondria as well. So it's very important that you have good hormone function. So looking at your female or male hormones, looking at your cortisol, making sure you're not insulin resistant, looking at low, looking at your thyroid, especially if you have autoimmune, that then you got to look deeper at the gut because a lot of inflammation is autoimmune based and that could be, there could be a connection there too. So you got to look a little bit deep into all this. So if you want to dive in deeper and really make sure your mitochondria is functioning optimally, put a link down below where you guys can reach out, make sure you're supporting your mitochondria, generating maximal ATP to energy so you can uh, feel great. All right, guys, I'll put a link down below. You can reach out and schedule and, and dial that in there. If you want to look deeper, there'll be a link where you can reach out to me. I see patients and work with patients all over the country, so all over the world too. So feel free and reach out. Guys, have a phenomenal day. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye now.